This is the United Nations, which I had covered as an investigative journalist for 10 years before abruptly being thrown out in 2016 for asking questions. Type thing, I appreciate it. And now uh, I do this is, I just want to note, I saw an article that uh, Mr. Chatterjee was named the UN resident representative in Kenya. And so I wanted to know, what's the process for the naming of a resident representative? And given that he's the son-in-law of the Secretary General, was there any recusal made? I'm not saying he's not qualified. I'm not saying he's not a long-time official. I'm just wondering what the, is the, the process the, the, for someone being the, named the, the, reg the regular process uh, was used. Uh, the fact that he is indeed uh, the son of the Secretary General, I think, does not take away uh, anything from his uh, very strong uh, service over the years to the sure. UN. That's Thank what you. I'm asking about the no, process. That's right. that's, 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 thank you. Here's Ban Ki-moon and his wife in Kenya, not shown as the son-in-law, Siddharth Chatterjee, he may have been taking the picture. Here's Ban Ki-moon with Stefan de Mistura, one of the UN officials who hired Siddharth Chatterjee and then saw his stock rate rise in the UN. Here's Ban and his wife with another UN official who hired the son-in-law, Jan Matson, in the gray suit, clapping. just wanted to give you a little bit more details on, uh, on the issue you had raised. Uh, yesterday with Mr. Chatterjee uh, and expand on what I'd said. Uh, Mr. Chatterjee was uh, chosen uh, through the regular process, which is uh, basically that the candidates are chosen by an interagency advisory panel, uh, which, uh, which uh, does not, and especially in this case, did not involve the Secretary General. I think he has been uh, fully aware of the situation, has kept uh, kept well away uh, from the selection process. I really appreciate that because I looked into it too, and it seemed like it goes that they supported, they sent it to the UNDG chair and the Secretary General. And I guess I'm just that's why I was asking yesterday. I just no, no, I'm just saying the, 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 for somebody somebody so, I mean, the Secretary off, General. The se Secretary General off. is 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 very aware of, of the sensitivities of this case and has stayed well away, well, well away from it. The final signature, because the, the way this works is the, the resident coordinator represents the UN. A letter of appointment, in a sense, has to be signed by the Secretary General. Uh, but this is a name given to him uh, by the interagency uh, panel. Sure. Can I ask one other? Michelle, come back to you. Beyond, it goes beyond the UN. There's a story in the Korea Times, as per usual, about the possibility of Secretary General running for president. The only reason I'm asking you is because it quotes what it describes as a Ban Ki-moon aide at some length, saying, quote, now that the pro-park lawmaker, lawmakers have taken the helm of the party, many say it will be helpful to Ban in launching a presidential bid, but I and other confidants of Ban don't agree. So it seemed like, I just want to know, is it, this is described as a Ban aide, so I don't think he has any aides beyond UN staff. Is that well, just, I just want to figure out? You know, first of all, I, I mean, I'm not in the in the business of trying to figure out who anonymous sources right. are, how people describe themselves. Um, so I can only say that again. I, I mean, I, there's really nothing for me to say except that the Secretary General is uh, fully focused on only sure. being Secretary General until December. 31st. And would he encourage his UN paid aides to, to, he, to I, I, limit I, I their work? Will not speculate, I will not speculate that the person is quoted is actually who, who that person is. Anybody who works for the UN, uh, whether they are Korean, Nepalese, or French, are only working on UN matters. Standard Charter Bank has this contract with the UN, and he's on their board. So is he still on their board, or is he somehow I, half on their I, board? I, How does I've, it work? I've described you. I've described you what the series of procedures are, and those are what applies to, to him as well as to other special advisors. So how is we're not we're not going to uh, interfere with their own outside of UN lives by going into all of their details at uh, at great length, but uh, but the ethics office uh, has been dealing with this, and they have a series of guidelines, of, and he's aware of them. How and, can and you be on compliant. the board of a corporation? You keep interrupting. All right, I'm asking because I see you already looking away, and I want to. This is I, a very looking, simple question. I'm looking at, a, at someone else who's raising a hand, sure. but but please behave yourself. You need to understand that when someone is asking a question, you allow them to answer. I've actually lost my train of thought, so I'll have to. to, to I'm just asking. It. I'm willing because to because I have a follow up the, question. Because is... the continued interruptions, you're doing it mm -hmm. again, actually break people's train of thought. Mm -hmm. He. Uh, he has uh, been in touch with the, the ethics office, they, and 
like I said, they have a series of remedies for the, the steps which I've detailed. Beyond that, uh, this, this is what we have. Ban Ki-moon goes way back with Han sung Su. Now, as Ban Ki-moon leaves the UN, he wants to run for president of South Korea. Who better to work with than Mr. Han, previously a prime minister of South Korea? Ban gave Han a UN position while letting Han remain on corporate boards where he made money from his UN position. It will all come full circle. I wanted to ask you about the John Ash case or whatever was being called the John Ash case. What do you, what, what do you conclude from, from what's come out so far in terms of how it kind of penetrated the UN and what time, type of reforms do you think are needed? Thank you. About this former PGA John Ash's case, uh, I was really shocked and very concerned to learn of this serious allegation against uh, John Ash, which go to the heart of the work of the United Nations and its member states. Uh, I have made it quite clear all the times uh, that the United Nations staff or leadership uh, should work with the highest level of integrity and ethical uh, standard. Uh, that is why I have made this one of the uh, top priorities. And I have asked OIOS to have a thorough uh, investigation. And I have um, uh, established a small um, a task force led by my chief of staff, uh, Susanna Malcora, uh, to uh, draw out some means and measures how we can make uh, more transparent and accountable uh, measures, particularly on the case of uh, uh, President of General Assembly, Office of the President of General Assembly. We have already uh, discussed this matter with the President uh, Liketov of uh, uh, P current PGA. He is a fully uh, support uh, what I'm going to do. With all this investigation by OIOS and with our own the internal uh, uh, discussions to, to draw up uh, some measures to improve uh, the conduct of the office of the PGA, and if necessary, I'm going to recommend uh, to the General Assembly to take some legislations uh, so that the uh, United Nations, whether it is a member state society or the staff side, secretariat side, we all have a responsibility and duty uh, to conduct our duties on a, a transparent and accountable uh, with the highest integrity of ethics. Thank you. Thank you. Ban Ki-moon said he was shocked, but here he is accepting an award from Francis Lorenzo, who pleaded guilty to UN bribery, and from John Ash's boss, Baldwin Spencer of Antigua and Barbuda. Here is Ban Ki-moon shaking a notable hand. Over his right shoulder is Frank Lorenzo, and over his left is Vivian Wang, who pled guilty to UN bribery. Here's Vivian Wang with Mrs. Ban, who also attended the founding of the Global Sustainability Foundation. There he goes, there he goes. Do you like the information you got from the Saudis? Well, who sort of said that you could give the open press briefing room to a closed meeting? If we're lending them the room, it's not a press briefing. Well, it's in the press briefing Next room. Next time, Frank, it's and you're you, no, and you're doing it. It's fucking Friday night. I'm so fucking tired. I want to go home. I'll sit there then. Get out. Uh, just you leave. Really, I'm not, I don't agree that there's a closed meeting in here. That's I didn't see anything about it. It was much less disruptive here. It's not a question of politeness, it's a question of principle. The principle is, this is a UN press briefing room with UN resources being used to do it. I'm a journalist, they're talking about things that affect journalists here. I want to attend it. And you should support me in that. I don't want to, I don't have to join Uncle. John Paul Amedic, quite clear at the start of the meeting, he said this is not my company's only. You are welcome to join for drinks at 7 o'clock. I have no desire to drink with you. I want to cover things that cover UN, that cover the UN. I just, you know what? I want to go home to my fucking children. It's Friday. I'm just asking you to leave. They're talking about issues that affect supposedly journalism. You can answer your phone. Don't touch my phone. I'm just asking. So you turned off the phone? I'm just asking. What is it? Is it a closed meeting? 
Is it a closed meeting? Is it a closed meeting? That's what I want to know. Yeah, but he lies a lot. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, but yes, so do you. Yeah, you, you honestly are. Someone told you. Have I been told? Have, have you, are you? You would leave. Okay, oh, this is not. This is not UN security. This is. I'm just asking you to leave. We'll get this sorted out. I'll explain to you on Monday. I'm just asking. I don't know what could be so secret. Here again was Francis Lorenzo in the UN press briefing room. Ban Ki-moon's Fairhan Hawk misspoke, but it wouldn't matter because it would be inner city press that would be removed. Censorship sweepstakes. And Ban Ki Moon's tenure went on longer. He started appointing people that, like, nobody knew how they got the job. Why did they, mm -hmm. they give him the job? For, for a UN iPhone, doesn't mean anything of what actually happens to it. It does show an awareness. It does show an awareness of, of a desire to create an impression. Mm -hmm. This used to say inner city press. Somebody, I don't know at what point, Tal, at what point was this, I never, I didn't notice it until the other day that my sign was torn off. When did that take place? Be aware, Luis is a member of Funko. It's gonna be hard to take that sign down. You may want to, but. They mentioned that Eugene Aviar was there. They didn't mention any of that. Too convenient. The whole thing is John Ash. John Ash is just, just you know, one guy. John Ash is the equivalent of Babacar Guy. He's just like the wrong person of color at the wrong time in the wrong place. And the boss, Hervé Laxis, or in this case, Mr. Ben Kimmel, gets off scot free. Even in TV, there's like water coming into yeah. the roof and not much sewage every time you go to the manager of the game. Not for $2 billion. Perfect. Another Ben Kimmel special. Or Michael Adlerstein. Find the evidence in the OIOS audit from page paragraph 37 through 40. Second. For you to have? Well, I'm taking it 
sticker, my belongings thrown in the street. That is above the organization. Yeah, yeah. journalists who write about it. That's my issue. I don't have an issue. They have an issue. The issue is called censorship. I think we're going to stay around here for a while. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what they expect. I don't know what they think. They think they're just going to throw people in the street and they're just going to walk away. It's fucking unbelievable. Unbelievable. The whole thing was BS. The whole thing was like sugar talk. Like, oh, it's great, it's great. That's like, give us your information, we'll throw your stuff in the street. It's like, okay, wait a second. Ban Ki Moon's UN has dumped ICP files onto First Ave. Has it dumped ICP? Let's find the, the audio, audio gear. Copy location. This, some people often say that some, something speaks for itself. This truly speaks for itself. That's like on February 19th, they threw in a city press out of that gate onto the street. Whereas on this side, Voice of America and South Africa Broadcasting stood last to film it. Today, after a bunch of sweet talk, after calls from Congress and letters from from the Government Accountability Project, this is what it's come to. This is the United Nations and how it treats journalists. Ten years I covered the UN. Ten years writing about corruption in the UN, and this is the result. Sometimes you have to laugh. Sometimes it's so absurd, because anywhere else in New York where a corrupt official tried to do this to the press, they would be taken to court. They would be taken to court. They would resign. They would have to answer questions. The job of the Department of Public Information is not censorship. It's supposed to be making openness, not censorship. But maybe some people, some of them, they might have even have money. These are articles about Burundi, Yemen, Sri Lanka. They didn't like those articles because the UN helped kill people in Sri Lanka, as they did in Haiti. Before I quit Anka, but soon before it, because I believed it was corrupt, in which the president of Anka, John Paolo Pioli, beyond his famous renting of an apartment to a Sri Lankan war criminal and screening his movie, there was an incident in which John Paolo Pioli awarded a Brooks Brothers tie to a spokesman during a briefing. And when, when, when called, he said, oh, what does it matter? You know, what does it matter? Like, you know, and, and soon thereafter, they were tricking out their clubhouse to have an open bar for the spokesman and for DPI staff, who they would later use and work with to evict inner city press. And hey, what does it matter? Macau based businessman taking over the lobby? What does it matter? Changing a document for a conference center in Macau? What does it matter? 40,000 dead on the beaches of Sri Lanka? What does it matter? 10,000 killed by the UN in Haiti? What does it matter? Throw the boxes in the street! Mm -hmm. Vice President, the Vienna Declaration and Program of Action was adopted under the auspice of the United Nations. It led to the creation of the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, the focal points of human rights within the UN, and set the United Nations at the center of the global human rights movement. At times of today, many believe that the United Nations itself should set the example for the rest of the world. Too often, however, we have seen that this is not the case. It is with regret and concern that we must request the Council's attention for a matter of interference of the right to freedom of expression of a journalist at the UN in New York by the Office of the UN Most Senior Official. After covering the UN for more than a decade, on 19 February 2016, Inner City Press was ordered to leave the UN premises on two hours' notice in a letter signed by UN Under Secretary General for Public Information. The official reason given was that the journalist covered a private meeting. This meeting was held in the UN press briefing room to which all press is ordinarily allowed and the journalist immediately left the room when asked to do so by UN security. Moreover, the apparent harassment of inner city press appears to have commenced after it began covering a story concerning corruption linked to the office of the UN Secretary General. While the story has been widely covered, it was inner city press that repeatedly asked pointed questions about it at UN press conferences given by the spokesperson of the Secretary General. The timing of the first expelling of the inner city press journalist from the UN, then the closing of his office at the time the story was being covered, after more than a decade of covering the UN, 
at best seems suspicious and at worst a blatant interference with the human rights to freedom of expression by a body who should know better and set a better example. We call on the High Commission for Human Rights to visit itself an Under Secretary General to inquire into this matter and to report the finding to this Council at its next session. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can tell you right now, the uh, UN Correspondents uh, Association uh, is uh, not uh, corrupt. Uh, Thank uh, you. Uh, again, Michelle, as <laughs> Michelle, as with as with Matthew, please take these disputes. Please take these disputes outside of this briefing. This is a press briefing. I understand that that you're responding to something that happened earlier in this briefing, but please. From here on out, let's just ask questions about the work of the United Nations, all right? The UN is being destroyed figuratively, literally. Now, on the way in, right after I suspended the broadcast, who came through, not having to go through the metal detectors as I'm now required to, but who came through? A team of six Moroccan diplomats, six. And I asked them, is the meeting at 8.30? One of them joked, it's at 8. The other one said, let's see. They think something's going on. Nothing's been announced by Mr. Dujaric. I'm here for a Security Council meeting. Many people are here. Here I am with my green pass. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Locked out of the Security Council. Locked out of the Security Council by Christina Gayaj. My pass doesn't work on the turnstile. This meeting is supposed to be open when there's a Security Council meeting. Huh. Huh. Well, let's see. Let's see. The spokesman's office never announced this meeting. Why not? We'll have more on that as well. Let's see. There's definitely people going in. There goes an American legal advisor. From the U.S. mission, here comes the Ukrainian government representative. There they are, the Spanish ambassador, the French ambassador, talking so nicely, so politely. And the UK ambassador. This is how it rolls with Western Sahara. Permanent representatives arriving for a meeting. If I were to try my pass, of course, they could, they could uh, tell me I shouldn't film security. But what I will tell you is that my pass does not work on this thing. Therefore, as the only journalist here, I can't cover the meeting. Good luck. Thank you.